name is Adam Trinder. This is my creation. I call it the AMT3. It's a three-wheeled vehicle. So I run my own little machine and fab shop. Decided it's time to build something for the shop to showcase kind of what I can do. Basically started from the rear wheel and worked my way forward. There's no plans of blueprints for this. It all came out of my head as I went along and this is what came about. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah, all right, this is, all right you guys, <laughs> we're going for a ride today, holy shit. All right you guys, what is going on today? We are in uh, Adam's creation here, it is, he calls it the AMT3, so it's basically a three-wheeled uh, car essentially. Um, no dead pedal, clutch is really actually short, which is cool. Oh yeah, that's a big truck. <laughs> I pretty much I feel like I'm gonna die to be honest. <laughs> Open wheel, this is just insane. Oh my, wow, all right. Clutch in, down a second. Whoa, wow. <laughs> Get smiles from everybody. You got people looking like, what the heck is this guy thinking? He's got a death wish or something. So this is powered by a Kawasaki Ninja 900R motor. It's carbureted. Uh, we got Wilwood disc brakes on the front, QA1 coilover suspension, the steering components are modified from an Austin Mini. The uprights in the front are modified from a Triumph Spitfire. The control arms are all custom made by myself. The rear swing arm is custom made by myself. Got an aluminum fuel cell that sits under your legs. The factory Kawasaki Ninja Dash. Uh, the carbon fiber front fenders are from a Lotus Super 7. The rear fender is custom made. Brake pedal kit is uh, all Willwood stuff as well. So as this is a motorcycle engine, it comes with its own sequential gearbox. Now this vehicle has no reverse, which is fine by me. It's very light. It's easy to push. Uh, it's got 145 horsepower and the vehicle weighs only 330 kilos. The shifting on this is done with your hand. It's hooked up to the motorcycle transmission. Um, so instead of using your foot, one down, five up, it's now one back, five forward. The clutch is cable activated. So I got that hooked up to a regular foot pedal. Clutchless up shifting, you just bang it into gear as you go. You only need the clutch for downshift and for pulling away from the light. So it's, it's similar to driving a car. It's a, basically a cross, really, between a motorcycle and a car. Power really starts coming on around 6,000 RPM, 7,000 RPM. Whoa. And on the brakes. Oh, you can rev match too, that is fun. All right, here we go. Little crackles from the exhaust. You know, you can just kiss the apex right on the dot. are pretty good. 
very strong actually. They take a lot of uh, a lot of force to get going, which is good. Gives you a lot of feel. So I just got my first ever wave from a motorcycle rider, but it was like he was really hesitant to give me the wave. <laughs> he was like, I, I, "Am I not? I'm not sure if I'm supposed to give this guy a wave. Is that a motorcycle? Is that a car?" All right, shall we? Little bit of tire spin. 12,000 RPM. <laughs> okay, all right. Once you touch 9,000 RPM, there's like another, there's just like another massive push of power. I can see the suspension working, all the suspension linkage, the brake lines and everything. Adam, you gotta build me one of these. This is ridiculous. The total build time of this vehicle took six months. When I originally had it insured and went through ICBC to get the registration all set up, they decided to register it as a motorcycle. Unfortunately, I got pulled over by a cop and my controls are not motorcycle controls. As you can see, I'm sitting inside a cockpit. I'm not straddling a frame. So the registration got pulled. It took another six months dealing with the BC Ministry of Transportation. I worked with the two head guys there. We made a new category for three wheeled vehicles. Now remember, this is about 10 years ago I did this. And this is why we have things like the Slingshot and the T-Rex available in BC. If you want to kick it out sideways, you can definitely do that. But just going into a corner and powering through, it's not going to step out on you. It's very predictable. It's very controllable. It gives you a feeling of riding a motorbike, but the safety of being in an enclosed cage so you're safe. And it's a different experience altogether from driving a car. You, you just can't feel stuff when you're in a car. But in this, you feel everything. It's fast. It is very fast. Very fast. Nice crackles. Second gear going into the corner. Apex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mind-blowing, seriously mind-blowing, kind of frightening. No, a, a lot frightening, yeah, definitely, definitely a lot frightening. This is clear your head, just get everything out of your mind and just, just pin it, just drive. I mean, I could drive this so long and honestly, it doesn't beat you up that much. I could drive this for a long time, to be honest. It's not that bad, not at all. Gas pedal, brake pedal, clutch pedal, attack and a steering wheel that is all you need for this thing this is the best day ever i've driven go-karts before I've, I've raced lay down shifter carts that's an experience in itself those are definitely fast They've got no suspension, so you definitely feel more than you would in this. But for the average Joe that's never gone in a lay down shifter cart or an upright go kart for that matter, this is like as close as you're going to get to it. And if you've ever wanted to race like an open wheel race car, this is pretty much an open wheel race car. So I run my own little machine and fab shop in, just outside of downtown Vancouver. I kind of do everything there. I've done things from motor swaps, like weird stuff. I've got a ZX-10R mid-engine Rover Mini. That's rear wheel drive. Uh, I've put a S2000s and Ford Cortinas and whatnot. So my work kind of ranges. I, I do the automotive stuff. I do motorcycle stuff as well, cafe racer modifications. And I also do store fixtures, like I'm pretty much a jack of everything. I don't set everything into one box. I spread it out because you kind of have to do that now in Vancouver. So I guess what this comes down to is I wanted to build something that I knew was going to be a challenge. I knew right from the start that 
I was going to get this insured. I was going to get this on the roads and it was going to be legal. And yeah, it took six months to do. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of time with the BC Ministry of Transport. But you know, we got through the red tape and in the end it was worth it. And you just got to be persistent and just let people know that this is what you want to do and you can do it. If there were like vehicles when I was a kid or, you know, things that I would look at and think of to just be the most insane fun things to drive on the street, but you could only really do in video games, this would be it. I mean, this is, this is a childhood dream. This is like, I mean, Adam is living the, like the kid's dream right here. This is absolutely just a toy and some crazy, uh, some crazy thought that a kid would have to drive or build something like this and actually have it insurable and drivable on the road. Like, how is this not illegal? What? back end come out a little bit on that corner it's a little slow you know it, it feels really good it didn't bounce around or anything oh man all right you guys i really hope you uh enjoyed this video This is the most fun I've ever had in a moving object on a road. This is the most fun I've ever had behind the wheel of anything, ever. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was just absolutely insane. Oh man, all right, you guys. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit us up on Instagram uh, at Roads Untraveled, Facebook.com slash Roads Untraveled Show. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and you know share the video if you appreciated this but